Good morning everyone. We've had an incredibly cold start today. Uh, we recorded a minimum of minus 1.9 degrees overnight. That's definitely the coldest I've ever recorded here on Pidwa. Uh, we've also had a windy few days but it's a little bit calmer today. The sun is out so we're heading out for some birds. Starting us off today we're here with a white fronted bee eater. Uh, so as the name suggests they do eat bees but also other insects like wasps, dragonflies, butterflies. Uh, and they'll hawk out into the air from their branch and catch the insects on the wing, often retaining to the same branch. And then you see that they use this well-adapted, long, thin beak to hold the insect away from the face, often beating out the sting on the stick um, before swallowing down. And they also have what's called rictal bristles on their face uh, that helps to channel the food in. They can't actually digest all of the parts of the insects so they do regurgitate pellets much like a an owl and that'll be made up of the hard insect parts. So these guys are here year round uh, along with little bee eaters so they actually have quite short wings but we do get bee eater species um, let's say a carmine bee eater for example uh, they migrate within Africa and they have much longer pointy wings. Here we've got an African grey hornbill. You'll remember that we've seen the yellow billed and red billed in previous videos. This is probably the next most common. Uh, you can actually hear the yellow billed hornbills calling in the background there. This beautiful little yellow bird here is a golden breasted bunting. Um, obvious where it gets its name from there with the golden colour, which you'll remember is caused by a pigment called carotenoids that gives um, birds their yellow colour. And then the buntings often have that zebra-like effect on the head there with the white and black stripes. So these guys mostly feed on the ground actually, but the, the golden is one of the buntings that does feed in the canopy as well but normally just on the ground, eating seeds and insects. Uh, there's very little sexual dimorphism between the male and female, because they are monogamous. Uh, but you'll often find that the male is just a little bit brighter and more vibrant in colour. So here we've got uh, some red-billed oxpeckers. These are the birds that you'll always find on the herbivores themselves. This particular ones are on a sable. Um, and they use any host species from something as small as an impala or warthog up to the size of a giraffe, even buffalo. And that just gives us a chance to talk about symbiosis. Uh, that's the relationship between two living organisms. And this particular relationship is what we call mutualistic. So both parties benefit. Uh, these birds are specially adapted. They've got very sharp claws and zygodactylous feet, meaning two toes facing forward and two back. So they can move uh, very easily, they're very agile, jumping all over the herbivore, removing ticks and ectoparasites, which obviously feeds them. And in return, uh, the herbivore gets rid of its tick load, making it healthier. So I've just uh, come up here onto the wall at Ranch Dam, and this is an incredible sighting of a pair of saddle-billed storks. Uh, now this is really, really special. They're actually classified as endangered. Uh, they say there's probably between about 50 and 100 pairs in South Africa. A lot of them are in the Kruger National Park. So incredibly lucky to have a pair here on the reserve. Um, and I'm just zooming in here to the male. I'm not sure if you can see just the little uh, yellow wattles that are hanging below the beak there. That's what tells us it's the male. He's also got a black eye, um, and then that's the female just at the back there. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, I think, but she's got a yellow eye. She's just got a little uh, red patch on the chest as well. So this is very exciting uh, to have a pair. These guys are completely monogamous. They pair for life, so that's why there's very, sexual, very little sexual dimorphism. They don't waste time on bright colours and things. They rather spend time on their bond. Uh, now this is actually the tallest stork in the world, about as tall as me even, <laughs> uh, can be up to five foot tall. And uh, actually a huge wingspan as well, 
about 2.7 meters, nearly three, almost the same size as the wandering albatross. And now interestingly, these storks don't make any noise as adults. Uh, they actually lack the vocal organ, organ called the syrinx, um, but then they communicate in a way known as bill snapping. So just snapping the bill together to make sounds instead. Very, very special to see them here on Pitwa. Here we have blacksmith lapwings. They're also here at the dam uh, with, alongside the storks. Uh, these are very common. Pretty much any water source that you'll come across, you'll find some blacksmith lapwings, normally in a pair like this. Uh, they're actually becoming one of the most common birds in South Africa. <laughs> So yeah, very widespread and like I say, wherever you find water, generally you'll find them. Uh, this is one of the birds that is named after their call. And that's because, I'm not sure if you can hear it here in the video, um, but it sounds like an, a blacksmith hitting metal with an anvil. Um, that kind of teak, teak, teak noise and that's where they get their name from. So they are feeding on invertebrates, both aquatic and terrestrial invertebrates. So they're running around uh, the grass here looking for insects. Uh, they actually breed all year round, um, but do most of their breeding between July and October. I've just got back to the garden here and we've come across um, a group of ibis that are feeding. These are Hardida ibis and there's actually another bird named after its call. So these guys are especially known for their call. Very very noisy and vocal which actually is surprising because the other ibis are not particularly vocal um, but these ones definitely are and it sounds like they say their name Hardida, Hardida as they call in. Uh, so these guys are using these very, very long bills to probe for insects. And what you can just notice when you catch them in the right light is that iridescent shield on the wing. Uh, and that is formed by the layered keratin in the feathers. And it basically just depends on how the light falls on that keratin uh, and which different wavelengths are reflected to give us the colour. Thank you for coming birding with us. We got some great species there this morning. We're really starting to notch up the numbers now, actually. If you've missed some of our previous bird videos, then just check our YouTube link here and you can see those episodes. Uh, we've got lots more to cover, even some of the most uh, common species we haven't seen yet. So we'll look forward to seeing you next time.